This will be the first of many resistors that are swapped out as part of the uh, resistor project. You could see here the replacement. This is actually a one watt resistor, 1%, 220 ohms. This is replacing a resistor that was actually half watt. Uh, I believe it was 10%, 220 ohms. The resistance value was 234, should be reading 220, now reading 220 as annotated here on my diagram. And then I circled it in, in blue to show that I've replaced that. So those are um, the replacement resistors. I gotta go around uh, the whole unit and do this. When I get tired of resistors, I do capacitors and so on and so forth till everything is done, but just give you an idea what's going on. This one 330K ohm resistor proved extremely difficult to get to. Furthermore, I've run the risk of damaging other things by trying to get to it, to knock it out. So I decided to take the, um, the safer method and actually took apart the entire side of this oscilloscope to get to it. This was previously broken. I wanted to point that out. I didn't do this. So I'm, I don't feel bad about it. I have the piece. I can put this back together. I saw this was cracked before I did any disassembly. But the resistor is inside this trimmer which you can see is very easy to access now but there was a whole metal cage on here and what i'm going to do is uh loosen these last two terminals pull this up and over uh do the work put it back and reassemble everything uh it's a lot of work to do one resistor but i felt that it was the safer way to go the resistor is actually let me see if i can get maybe zoom will work for me yep resistor is actually under there under way under here down here so with all the metal shielding around it was impossible to get to here we have everything moved out of the way now you could clearly see the uh, 330k resistor that has to be removed surrounded by the uh, the domino mica capacitors there for those who don't know their color code there's the uh, 330 right there orange orange yellow with the gold you can see that these are uh, five percent tolerance. I'm replacing it with a one percent only because you know, why not? I think the time was well worth it to get a nice clean installation on there like that for such a hard to reach area. I tested it out. It was well within one percent. The other ones were within one or two percent, you know, from their original uh, values, uh, well within five percent what was prescribed. So now I'll reassemble everything. I'll probably put a little epoxy on the board right there and get everything back to how it was. And no doubt this will be the longest amount of time uh, to replace a single resistor on this board or longest amount of time to replace a single component on this board, but definitely well worth it. I still find it amazing that this, uh, uh, for instance, this uh, 62 ohm resistor, you can see the top one is a replacement. The top one is a one watt resistor. The bottom one is the old half watt resistor. And you could see the, the, the top one is able to dissipate twice as much as the bottom one, even though it's half the size, uh, using better manufacturing techniques and materials, you know, all these years later. I mean, literally look at the size difference here and rated it twice as much. Just unbelievable. But I just wanted to point that out there. So I pull out this 62 ohm resistor because in testing, it was reading 101. I confirmed this, obviously, again before I pulled it out. I've replaced it down there with one that was reading 52.99. It's a perfect 62 match. And when I put it in, it's reading 55, right? So I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Now, when I look at it, uh, it connects across to this 470. One side goes to ground, okay? One side goes to that one volt peak to peak that goes to nowhere, and then it crosses across to 470 to H, so 470 could have the shortest path to ground. So when I checked 470 across that to H, I got the same exact value, which tells me that there's a good chance that 470 just ate it. So now I have to pull that one up and check it separately because it looks like it looks like we may have another bad resistor in here. So I lifted up the resistor to test it, and sure enough, 62 came out to be correct again. And this resistor turned out to be 40, 490, which was uh, around 4 or 5% of the value that was expected. So this one turned out to be okay as well, too. 
So I'm going to put it back down and call this all good and something that can't be tested accurately within the circuit itself. So here we are well into the uh, resistor replacement portion of the project. Um, as I showed earlier, we've gotten that precision resistor swapped out there at the trimmer capacitors over here on this side of the unit. Uh, I was able to remove some of the uh, resistors that were untestable in circuit. Uh, the ones that were fixed have blue now wrapped around them to show that they're fixed. Vertical gain obviously has not been fixed because that's uh, a pot. I'll be dealing with that later. Uh, disregard any annotations for capacitors. Uh, some of them, uh, due to some other work, have been uh, shown to be good. Like this one is actually 32K. We're leaving that one alone. Uh, some of them that were not testable in circuit. Uh, were shown to be uh, good or bad, like this one. This one was replaced. I worked my way around. I got them all done. I'm leaving these ones alone, as I mentioned earlier. I'm not going to destroy this resistor coil combination to test it. I'm going to try and find a method. As I go around, I got my, my hit list over here for the next round of, of orders. Obviously, it's quite small. I got my 2K pot. I got my 470K um, that, that opened up down here. Uh, doing some work this one broke it was just within tolerance and then heating it up for those uh, two capacitors there uh, brought that resistor to an end and then I got this one which which is annoying the hell out of me um, I found some uh, documentation that I'll display on the screen here for everybody to see I had matched up the transformer that I have with the documentation that I'm using, okay? And it also shows, along with that documentation, the parts list that shows that that part was included. And if you look at that, you will also see that the, the rack and stack picture for this unit shows that resistor in place. And and it should all be obvious. And here's the problem. This, this unit was repaired by somebody granted and they went and tied off that that old 20 onto a separate 20 can they, they did a decent job they did a, the correct job and when i look at other people's pictures other people's videos of every single one of these i do not see that 10 or uh, that 100 ohm resistor coming across here Except in that, except in that instruction manual, nobody's got it. I've already seen three videos of this, right? Uh, at least two videos from from uh, uh, competent uh, uh, people of of the uh, um, in 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 of of, of people who who restore these uh, types of things, and nobody nobody's got it. When you look here, you could see that. Uh, the the bar was 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 cut across as if it was it, it was done in an instruction manual like like an unused pin right where you would expect to see uh the resistor would wrap around and then it would meet right there right so it looks pretty standard it doesn't look like it was a hack job that somebody did you know standard extra piece of of uh, um uh wire you know snipped off you see this all the time in, in, in Heathkit. So basically, based on everything in the entire world, the only example where I have seen the resistor wrapping around and going to connect here is, is in the instruction manual and nowhere else. Not on any other Heathkit, nothing, right? So I'm, I'm pretty clueless about this. So I'm going to have to keep doing some further research, but I'm going to order that resistor. I don't know, maybe put it in line and see what the voltages are, swap it out and see what the voltages are. I have no idea at this point, right? I'm waiting for certain people to get back to me. I haven't heard from them yet, so I'm going to be patient. Here's a 470K ohm resistor that I replaced. On the left side, I put it in properly. It's, you know, finished and installed. However, on the right side, I simply just kind of tack welded it in place. And the reason why I did that was I didn't feel the need to properly dress this resistor in, knowing that after this project is done and the uh, capacitor project gets started, I'm going to be ripping out these capacitors and having to remove all this work anyway. So I didn't want to lose track of where things were, so I just tacked it into the uh, existing solder so I wouldn't lose place to where things were going. And that's good enough for now. This, uh, this unit's not being turned on anyway, but it'll hold things in the correct position. Good enough for me. It's good enough to do the test with my uh, multimeter, make sure everything is reading the right voltages, and that's it.
I finished the first two rows in my uh, schematic diagram as you see here. Um, annotated some new areas that needed some work, uh, others that were corrected as shown and I started making those lists here. Things are coming along very nicely. Um, there's going to be another purchase of parts as shown. I've decided after giving it some consideration I'm going to put in this 100 ohm resistor. Uh, the reason is simple or complicated depending on how you look at it. Uh, the resulting voltages are going to be higher than the 117 volts that existed on the lines when this was created at the time. So the outputs are going to be higher anyway. So the smart thing is that if I'm going to be ordering resistors, I might as well slap in a 100 ohm resistor and see what the resulting voltages are. If the resulting voltages turn out to be fine, I'll leave it in there. If the voltages are way too low, I'll just snip out the resistor and leave it as originally found. It's not going to hurt this unit to have too much or or it's not let me rephrase that it's not going to hurt this unit to have to have the 100 ohms of resistance in there the worst that's going to happen is 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 this um dc rail will have too low of a voltage that's it but it could hurt the unit to not have it there so i've decided to take the prudent approach and 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 put it back in there um eventually i'm going to have a second run schematic that i'm going to print out that's just going to include all the red that's left after the correction. So all this square blue is going to be removed. And basically I've got this to work on, this bottom half now, and and then do the capacitor. So, so that's where I'm at. This resistor was unique because it required replacing it with a uh, 500 micro microfarad capacitor, which was tied in parallel along with it. I'm going to see if I could save the capacitor. If not, I'm just going to replace the capacitor with the resistor and call it a day. I was able to remove the capacitor from that resistor. These capacitors are pretty resilient and it shows uh, 500 picofarads. So this capacitor will be tied onto the new resistor and put back on. Like I said, these capacitors, they either fail or they don't. If they're not physically damaged, you don't throw a lot of excessive heat on them. They'll pretty much last forever first order of business was to get that resistor back in but I left a little bit of a standoff on this one I wanted to leave some room I put the uh, capacitor on but not wrapped around to leave a bit of a, a margin so I'd be able to set up and stage this capacitor once the resistors in resistor soldered in and rigid now so I'll be able to stage this capacitor and tie it up now I've got the capacitor retacked onto the new resistor and this one is done I had to disconnect everything from this one meg spot shape potentiometer to be able to get a correct reading. Uh, the good news is I got a correct reading. Uh, this is one meg on the end-to-end uh, -end terminals as we would uh, hope to see. So that's one meg good. And then on the uh, adjustable portion of this, which I will attempt to do, is the adjustable portion side of this. We have a, a nice sweep down to zero and all the way up back to one meg that shows the operation of this pot is correct it's just not testable in circuit I'm gonna mark that as good and we're gonna officially call that portion done just out of curiosity I found out that uh, the gray wire has no effect on uh, ruining uh, the test of this one microfarad pot I further found out that the red wire can also be connected. The only uh, effect that the red wire has is that if you're trying to test this circuit, it takes a, um, a quite a long time because you have to charge through the capacitor. Uh, in doing so means obviously that you have to wait for this needle to rise all the way back up to one. So I'll just show you if I connect the red wire, you'll see it drop down. The meter will drop down and then it'll take a, a long time to rise back up. Let me see if I can get it in here so it will stay. It, as it's charging the capacitor, you get an inaccurate reading and then eventually it'll be fully charged and then it'll be right back up to uh, 100 on that top scale as you'll see right there. And then once it's at 100 and that capacitor is fully charged, I could actually check the pot and go from zero back to that 100. And the only uh, effect will be there's, there's a little bit of a delay when I when I turn the pot down and up, but that's it. You know, I could actually just I'll turn it all the way down. 
and all the way back up and you'll see it charge again a little bit so that works but if i if i connect the black wire then 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 everything goes goes wonky and does what it did before go up to one and then back down so that black wire is is the wire that uh stops this potentiometer from being tested in circuit i thought i would just check that out and and see what it was i was curious that's all i've disassembled this vertical gain potentiometer i'm going to uh test it and attempt to repair it if not it's going to be replaced it's clear to see that turning this pot this is pretty much garbage it goes from zero to uh fully open let's see if we can find out why it looks like the uh carbon or graphite material has long since broken off this pot only a small piece of it exists on the uh, bottom portion as you see the rest of it is no longer there uh, this pot is not salvageable so i'm gonna have to find a replacement for it it's unfortunate but these things do happen